Hello class. I'm sorry you can't be here due to class being canceled for this now, but I'm happy to be able to give you a lecture anyway. So there'll actually be three lectures posted. The first one is on 13.4, which is velocity and acceleration. So a bit of a physics section. Okay, so we're going to give you one example, which is a projectile is being fired from a height of 10 meters and it's being fired at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. Its initial speed is 500 meters per second and we want to find first of all a vector equation for its position and then use that to find its range, its maximum height, and its speed at impact. So let's see, we're going to find equation for position. Range, max height, and speed at impact. information we have to start out. So we know that its initial position, if this is the origin here, I'm working really in two dimensions for this problem, um, x direction and the y direction. So if we put the origin right here, then its initial position is at the point 0, 10, and writing that as a vector equation, that's going to say r of 0 is 0 in the i direction and 10 in the j direction. Okay. What about its initial speed of 500 meters per second? That's saying its velocity at 0 has a norm of 500. And also its velocity has an angle of 30 degrees. Do you remember when we did that in the very first section, 12.1? If we had like an angle and a magnitude of a vector, we could break it up into components. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to say that the v of 0 in the i direction is going to just be 500 times cosine 30 degrees. And the j direction is going to be 500 times sine of 30 degrees. All right, I can simplify that a little bit and say the velocity at time zero is, let's see, I think this is going to be 250 square root of 3 in the i direction and 250 in the j direction, just using the fact that cosine 30 is square root of 3 over 2 and sine 30 is 1 half. All right, so those are our initial conditions here. Also, this is a, a projectile due to, uh, and there's gravity going on here, right? So that's giving us one more piece of information. Gravity gives us the amount of acceleration, and gravity is in the downward j direction, negative j direction. So we also know that the acceleration vector at time, any time t is always zero in the i direction, well, at least after time zero after you launch it, um, and then it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared in the j direction. This should remind you of stuff you did in Calculus 1, right? If you're given an acceleration, what do you do to find a velocity? You have to integrate. So acceleration is the derivative of velocity. In other words, the velocity is the integral of the acceleration. And so that's the integral of negative 9.8j. And that just gives us negative 9.8t in the j direction plus a constant. Just like in calculus 1, to figure out the constant, 
we need to use our initial conditions. So we can use the fact that V of zero is this quantity here. In other words, 250 square root of 3i plus 250j is going to be equal to negative 9.8 times zero, when time is zero, j plus c. Remember that c is a vector constant. Now I can solve for v, c, and get that c must be 250 square root of 3i and 250 plus 9, oh, sorry, this is 0, so it's just 250j. All right, so now I've got my velocity worked out. I'll rewrite it. Velocity times t is negative, let's see, it's the i direction is 250 square root of 3i, and the j direction, I put this and the c together, um, so that's negative 9.8t plus 250 in the j direction. I make this plus negative 9.8. All right, so here's my velocity. I still need to find my position vector, so guess what I do? I integrate again, and my position. My derivative of my position is my velocity vector. In other words, my position is going to be the integral of velocity. So that's the integral of 250 root 3i plus negative 9.8t plus 250j. And when I integrate here, I get 250 square root of 3t in the i direction. Integrating here, I get negative 9.8t squared over 2 plus 250t in the j direction. Okay. I need still a constant of integration. Solve for d, I can use again my initial condition. So I have that r of 0 is just 10j, and that's what I need to get when I plug in 0 here. So that's 250 root 3 times 0i, which is just 0. And all this when I plug into 0 is just plug in 0 for t is just 0j plus d. So my d is just 10j. And finally, I have an equation for my position, which is this mass plus my 10j for d. So it's uh, 250 root 3ti plus negative 9.8t squared over 2 plus 250t plus 10j. All right, now I've got my position vector. Now I can start answering those questions I posed at the beginning. So the first question was, I believe, the range. So the range means how far is it going to go before it hits the ground again. But when it hits the ground, the information there is that my position is going to have a height of 0. So if I set my height to zero and solve for t, that'll give me the time at which it hits the ground. And plugging that back in to the x part of the vector gives me how far it's gone. Okay, so. Um, to find the range, set negative 9.8 over 2t squared plus 250t 
plus 10 equal to 0. Solve for t using the quadratic formula. And we get t equals, you get two answers from the quadratic formula. Negative 0 0.04 or 51.06. I'm a little curious this is a negative number, but if you think about it, at time zero it's already 10 feet high. So it makes sense that when I solve this equation for getting a height of zero, it would end up being a negative time, even though it doesn't really make much sense in the problem. Okay, but this is the answer we want here, and then we plug that into our x, 250 root 3, T, and we get 250 root 3 times 51.06, which is 22,109.6 meters. Big range. All right. Uh, next, we want to find the maximum height. So what information do we have about the object when it's here at the maximum height? I mean, I could do sort of calc one kind of stuff and take derivatives and stuff to see where it's at the maximum height, but there's something way easier than that, which is to look and see when the velocity in the up-down direction is exactly zero, right? Because here, there's some velocity in the up direction. Here, there's some velocity in the down direction. Right at that second, it's at the top. There's no velocity in the up down direction. So if I look at to find the height, let me move up a little bit actually. To find the height, first find the maximum height, that is where the velocity in the j direction is zero. And I remember my velocity equation That's the time we calculated when we were figuring out the range. 
So again, we just plug in and compute this magnitude, and we get square root of 250, square root of 3 squared, plus 250 minus 9.8 times 51.06 squared, and that gives us 500.2 which is very, very close to the initial velocity. If we had started at zero instead of at 10 feet, everything would be symmetric and we should actually get the initial velocity because this is an idealized problem, no air resistance, that kind of stuff. Since we started a little high, we'd actually get that velocity of 500 when we get to 10 feet again over here. And when we go down to ground, we're a little bit higher. All right. So that's the velocity acceleration problem. Now I want to say a few words about how this kind of problem in the language of physics relates to some of the stuff we were talking about last time with curvature, normal vector, unit normal vectors, unit tangent vectors, that kind of stuff. So let's relate the language of physics
So let's see. I need more space. Okay. We know that. related to curvature, right? So curvature is, by definition, this derivative divided by the derivative of r prime for this norm divided by velocity in the language physics, or this divided by speed. Okay. So, in other words, this quantity, which has a prime on it, um, if I want to replace this quantity with something else, I can replace it with speed times curvature. Uh, so, let's see here. So, my unit tangent vector's derivative is curvature times speed, replacing for this, times the normal vector. Okay, so now if we go back over to here, we see that acceleration is just the derivative of velocity plus the velocity squared times the curvature times the normal vector. Because I replaced the t prime here with k v normal. That's all I did. And then I got the extra v from here. So I think this is kind of cool that you can use the same, I, the curvature actually comes up in a physics formula having to do with acceleration. I think it's also kind of neat that you can break apart acceleration this way into a tangential component. just how fast the speed is changing, and then a normal component. And the normal component has this curvature in it, which kind of makes sense, because the curvature is sort of measuring how fast you're turning, which is sort of like the turning, like the acceleration of the normal direction that's making you turn. Kind of cool. That's all for 13.4. There'll be another video for the next two sections.